Hello my crafty peeps, it's Cheyenne from ecdesignstudios.com. Alright, today we are going to make this cute little tag that you can put on treats that you're giving for Halloween or any sort of Halloween gifties, great for the grandkids. You know, whatever. If you happen to love Halloween like I do, you're going to find some sort of use for this. Oh, this would be good for scrapbook pages too. Alright, so let's get to the list of things that you're going to need all right we're going to be using the jar of haunts stamp set we're going to use the candy corn and the a spooky treat for you to eat stamp let's put that out of the way we're going to need our stampin up silver embossing powder i got this little container from the dollar store to keep my embossing powders in and i just use like a little baby spoon probably going to get actual plastic like spoons cut them down to fit inside this and have it live in there I've been liking this system so far so so far I recommend it alright next we are going to need a daffodil delight and a pumpkin pie stampin rate marker to color in our candy corn I highly recommend these markers they are fantastic one in you've got your brush tip the other end you got a writing tip so you can write with them, you can color with them. They're very versatile. You can stamp with these. You know, they're they're really great. You know, you're not going to regret buying the entire marvelous marker set or whatever it's called. It'll be linked. Um, I use them all the time. All right, you need the Versamark because we've got our embossing powder, so we're going to be doing some embossing and your heat tool. Uh, basic black archival stampin' pad. Anytime you're coloring, it's good to have the basic black or the basic gray archival because it's not going to run and bleed on you as you're coloring, water coloring. I've got my stamps here on the Stampin' Up! block. Got the candy corn on the B block and the sentiment on the C block. These are great blocks. Highly recommend them too. In the holiday catalog, you can get a trio of ribbons, a delightful, er, a delightful Dijon, mint macaroon, and rich razzleberry. So we're using a piece of rich razzleberry, which is approximately five inches long. It's just got to fit around the tag. Right, and from our tags and framelits set, I have numbered mine and measured them so I can better tell you the dimensions of everything. So you're going to need the biggest tag which measures 2 by 2 and 7 sixteenths. You're going to need the third largest, there's only six, so like the middle size of the labels. Uh, this one is 1 and 15 sixteenths by 1 and 3 eighths. And then you're going to need the next size down, which I've labeled number 4. So 1 being the biggest, 6 being the smallest. So 4, this one measures 1 um, by 1 and 11 16th by 1 and 3 sixteenths. I don't know who ended up measuring those for all of us, but I thank them greatly because, you know, that's, that's a lot to measure. All right, I've gone ahead. Oh, and the tags and labels comes with this little guy. This is the hole punch for the tags. It's the 1 18th, 1 eighth inch hole punch so you can use this as you're running it through the big shot or you can just punch it in um, later with an actual punch uh, your choice or you can not punch it at all okay, I've gone ahead and cut out the pieces so we've got our largest tag in whisper white we've got that middle label in basic black and the one down from that in whisper white so Imagine I've gone through the whole big shot process. All right, let's go ahead and emboss our image first. So we got our Versamark, our a spooky treat for you to eat. And we're just going to ink up the stamp. Now usually I don't go ahead and pre-cut these. I will stamp them onto a scrap sheet and then put the label around it and cut it out with the Big Shot that way. Doing it a little backwards today because sometimes that's how I roll. 
All right. We've got our embossing powder. Okay, having it in this little container, it just makes it so much easier to collect the powder because it just goes straight back into the container. You don't have to worry about popping it on the paper, collecting it that way. All right, so that's all there is to that process. And I'm going to heat it up and emboss it. I'll be right back. All right, so here is our little embossed image. Now this step is optional. You can just stamp it with regular ink, but I just think it gives it that extra something. All right. Oh, we are also going to need a rich Razzleberry ink pad because I actually sponged around this. So a little piece of the Stampin' Up! sponge and your pad. You're a, a spooky treat for you to eat. So you just ink it up and kind of come in off from the side, like don't start it off on whatever you're inking, kind of come in at an angle and that makes it so that it's, it's nice and soft now I do find, you know, if you like the Tim Holtz distressed inks these do work in a very similar manner um, I think the blendability of the Tim Holtz one, it's, are, it's a lot easier. And I don't know whether it's the sponge, or, you know, because Tim Holtz has the, you know, special sponge applicator blender blending tool, ink blending tool. And it's really nice. I, I think that's, that goes a long way into the wonderfulness of the Tim Holtz stamps. But these are awesome too. You can watercolor with them, you can use them with blender pens, you can ink with them, and you don't have to worry about the water reactivity. Um, Tim Holtz, the Distress Inks are lovely, I love them, I use them a lot, um, but, you know, there are times when I'm going to use like water splatters and I don't want water splatters on uh, my stuff, so alright. Anyway, enough of my rambling. Got our basic black label, and we're just going to pop our sentiment right onto that with some snail adhesive. All right. We'll set that aside. Fold that over, because now we're going to stamp the candy corn. Actually, I think I'm going to stamp it on. Now I'm going to use this. I don't want to have to clean up my silicone mats. Silicone mats are great, but it stays wet if you get ink on it. So I'm trying to work clean. I'm trying to get better about working clean. All right, so ink up your candy corn. Now it's kind of set up to be like in a corner. So just go ahead and stamp around the edges however you feel comfortable because of the nature of the stamp if you overlap it you can't tell it's fine you know, a lot of this is going to be you know, covered up when we put the the sentiment over top of it so you don't have to worry about being too fancy and precise with it Alright, let's put away the ink pad, and now time to color. So when you're coloring the proper candy corn, I guess it's up to you, like what you want, but usually yellow is on the outside, so that's the daffodil delight, the orange is in the middle, and white is at the end, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to color all of these and we'll be right back. Alright, so here I've got it all colored in. And again, if you were, you know, making a bunch of these, maybe just stamp it in, you know, pumpkin pie and call it a day instead of coloring it in. But if you've got the time to actually color, color it in, go for it. 
All right, next, let's take our rich raspberry, our snail adhesive. Now, I'm just going to put some snail adhesive on either end of this, and our label's going to go on the front. So that's where I'm going to have the ends meet up. Because you don't want to see the raw ends on the back of the card. Of course, if you're gluing it down to something, it doesn't really matter. But you see, there we go. We've got it nice and adhered. I'm going to take some more snail adhesive on the back of our label. And because it's going to go over ribbon, I'm being very generous with how much snail that I'm putting on. Just kind of center that up. Pop it on. And there we have our candy corn tags. Oh, Alright, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please remember to like and subscribe. Happy crafting, happy creating, and happy Halloween. And don't forget, if you want a full list of the products used with links to my online store, visit my website. The link is in the description bar below. Oh, thank you again for watching. Bye.